Hi, that's Jim D. And that's Brett G. And, and welcome to Chatterbox. Chatterbox. Hi, everybody. And welcome back to the latest edition of Chatterbox. The latest edition. The latest one. Um, I know you were waiting with bated breath. Everybody's just finally can heave a sigh of relief that we're back on the air. Those two fools again. Yep. <laughs> Are you talking about us or the two people that actually watch this? <laughs> it's like a bad car wreck. <clears throat> yeah, welcome back to Chatterbox. And tonight we have another hopefully interesting topic that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. And that is, and again, disclaimer, like always, this is our opinions. Do what Yours you may vary widely. And I want to state that the title of this could come off as sounding negative in a way, but it's not. It's just merely an observation. And that title would be, why can't manufacturers get certain things right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're looking at you, dragon. No. <laughs> We're looking at you, dragon. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah. <laughs> So um, what kind of, I, since this is a topic I came up with for a change, um, I, uh, what brought this up is just different things that uh, I run into in my modeling endeavors. And the first one that really popped this to mind was one of our favorite topics in the modeling world that can cause much wailing and gnashing of teeth, and that is... Decals. Decals. So here's the thing with decals. That was that's why cool. when you bent down, all you could see, like your body disappeared and it was just a floating head. Now that's cool. Pretty awesome. We're in the <laughs> nether world here. <laughs> um, but the starting with decals and what <clears throat> I am, <clears throat> excuse me, talking about here is there are certain brands of decals that are phenomenal. Yes. Almost always are they phenomenal. And one um, brand that comes to mind is been around forever, Cartograph. Right. Cartograph makes really good decals. And by really good for me, <clears throat> that means the colors are good, uh, they're color fast, they're in register, and then the important things is they are thin enough that once you work with the model a bit, you get them applied and you do some clear coat stuff like that, they virtually disappear. And they, and they lay down well using oftentimes different brands on the same set of decals, different brands of setting and solvent solutions. Um, another one is uh, Barracuda decals. Uh, that was, man, I, I used some of those one time for the, on, what was it? The BF109 G10, 132nd scale Revell kit. I built a long time ago that I didn't finish because I had an accident with it. Right. Uh, those decals were also just stellar. So there are people that can make really, really good decals consistently. Okay, right. but then you run into some of the other ones that, for some reason, they're just not of, of the same standard. And and one that I'm going to, I don't want to say I'm complaining about because they're good decals. It's just they're really thick. And that's, to me, a decals. Yeah. You know, it, and, and what's funny, and I, I held these decals up a few minutes ago. These are from that uh, Panzerkampfwagen II that Tamiya makes in 135th scale, okay? Now, the copyright on this actual set of decals, because obviously you're reboxing, is 2001. 2001, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And they're really nice. They're thin. Mm -hmm. um, again, they're in register. Uh, don't have an excess of carrier film, but... It seems like, and again, this is just my opinion, 
they've regressed in their decal making stuff. I don't know if they do them in-house or if they have somebody else do them. But nowadays, newer kits, they just seem to be really thick. And they work okay, especially if you use their... Um, they seem to work best when you use their... Whoops. Uh, their brand of decal solvent setter. Yeah. Which but you would still they're really thick, you know? Right. And it's just... If some guys are able to do it really well, the technology obviously is there. Right. So why isn't everybody doing pretty much the same thing? So that's yeah. that's my first well, that's, that's my first question. item of discussion. Everybody doing the same thing, yeah. And, and you know, I mean, that's what we're seeing with with things like cars you know you you go down the road and you see five different cars from five different manufacturers and if you took the badges off of them, they all look the same mm -hmm. it's because a lot of the stuff that these car engines you know it used to be the, the manufacturer built the car now they're buying sub assemblies from other people and putting them together yep uh, they're using the same design teams and, and yeah, so why are why are we not seeing more of that in in things like decals and stuff? Yeah, because I mean you have these small independent manufacturers, companies, you know, you got Eagle Cows, you got Barracuda. Um, you know, they're fairly small, but their stuff is really good. I wonder who's printing it though. Is Cartograph printing? I know see Cartograph prints like um, oh who is it? I want to say um Oh, two guys? Is it two bobs? Two bobs? I think Cartograph yeah. theirs. Because I've seen them talk about, you know, they have to buy, they have, minimum order is 500 sheets. Yeah. And they're like, it's hard to sell 500 sheets. You, yeah. you know, people don't understand how small right. the group is, you know. Yeah. You know, they're, they're not, they're not, uh, not to get off on a tangent, but. Right. You know, so is, so, you know, you have a lot of these smaller companies are doing the design work, but they're not printing them. Right. How many I mean, that could very well be the deal. And maybe, you know, some of these guys need to look for other people to print their stuff. Because yeah. the, the, Revell, the Revell of Germany kits yeah. um, that came out like in the, I don't know, 2010, 2013, I don't remember when it was, but the BF 109 G6, the G10, the FW 190, uh, whatever other ones that there were. I mean, there was quite a few of them that came out around that time period that right. were just really good kits, especially considering they were Revell. But right. all of their decals were really good. And right in the bottom, printed by Cartograph. Right. You know, that's fairly common. Yeah. But the, you know, getting back to the subject to hand, it's like, it just seems like, the technology is there. Obviously, some people are able to do them and do them well. Right. And I understand that, you know, you have to make X amount in order to make it profitable. But, you know, why can't these big manufacturers? And I'll just say it. I'll, I'll use Tamiya for the example because, I mean, they're huge. They sell tons and tons of models. So right. why can't, you know, because, and it's a common, it's a common you know, uh, complaint is like, you know, de to me, decals are really thick and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, right. So it's not, it's not just me, but no, it seems no. to be a thing. And why can't they get it? Right. This, as I've talked about before, I don't know, on this, you know, in a, in a chatterbox episode, but this is the Edward Weekend Edition, the new boxing of the G10. Yeah. These decals are great. Yes. Edward Edward makes really good decals. <laughs> These, I, don't know, I don't know who does them. I I don't know if I even have the sheet anymore because I tend not to keep a whole lot of stuff anymore. But um, yeah, I mean they were great, absolutely. Fair. <coughs> they were thin, but they were tough. They That's were, another thing. Is like you know, not only do they need to be thin, but they have to be able to take some you know moving around and positioning and stuff like that and i don't know some people are able to nail yeah. it 
and 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 uh, you know, granted, there's quite a few coats of clear on here, uh, not intentionally, but it just happened that way. But um, they're they're great. They're great. You know, and, and why can't everybody do that? You know, I don't know, but but even at that, I mean, nothing is perfect, and and I guess what I would say is, I mean, I got I got this I got this Cameo Four cutter sitting right here that I been sitting here for like three months and I haven't used it yet, and it's plugged in to the computer and the wall and everything. But, and I've even got Oracal. I just haven't taken the time to do anything with it. But um, as that becomes easier and easier to do, I don't think decals will ever go away because they're simple. Right. right? And they don't require an investment in a cutter and, and things like that, you know. Um, but you got to wonder for, um, for some people in the hobby, at least, is this, is this something that we're, how do I say this? Is this something that we're not, once, you know, we got all this time into something, do we really want to take the chance of, of, of a decal blowing up on us? Mm -hmm. and, <clears throat> When we know we can cut a mask and put it on there and spray it, and we're good. And the nice thing is, is if you spray it on there and you goof it up, you take it off. Spray your base coat back over. Right, you know, or do it on top of a clear and just wipe it. Yeah. And, you know, well, as far as as far as uh, spraying spraying the markings, um, if you goof it up, like if you get overspray or something like that, you can't fix, and you can just spray your base coat back over it and respray your insignia or yeah. whatever it is. Yeah. Now, for I'll tell you, and sometimes you get uh, decal sets that you normally trust and have a failure with, like inconsistencies. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, even nothing's perfect. Yeah. That that um, super scale deal decal set I got for Bad Angel P51 Mustang. I put the the stencils. I mean, just putting those on with no clear coat, they were almost invisible except for the actual print. Right. Uh, the name Bad Angel. Um, but the national insignia, for some crazy reason. I put them down and they would not lay down. And I did the same thing to those. I did to every other decal on the set and they wouldn't lay down. So I tried to, you know, I tried to smooth them down with the, uh, with a Q-tip and a brush, trying to get them to lay and they wouldn't put some, you know, um, micro saw on it. I use micro set to get them on there. Like I normally do micro saw and, they laid down with really nice wrinkles all over the place. And nothing I did, I tried solve the set. And usually that stuff is bulletproof. None right. of it worked. I ended up having to sand those wrinkles out. And even at that, the decals still, those big decals, for some reason, just look wonky. So, I don't know. It's just one of those things that it's just like, it just seems to me, it's like, you know, with all the stuff we've got nowadays, and we're still after all this time, you know, 60, 70 years of models being around with decals and still having problems like that. It's just kind of annoying. Well, yeah. And, and or I'm just a complete dwid and I don't know what I'm doing, but. <laughs> I don't think that's it. <laughs> but, well, I was going to kind of jump off of that and say, you know, we can go in and, and, and I think a good place to jump from this is to paint, you know, and, and, and I, it's, it's, I guess, it, I don't want to say it's frustrating for me, but, but I, I kind of, I see a lot of discussions about paint as, as I'm sure everybody does, but 
Um, and we've had discussions amongst ourselves of things that it's like, okay, well, this doesn't work for me. Well, I don't know. I didn't have any problem with it. Well, you know, and I can't get this part to work. And, and this, and, 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 and you've basically had arguments with yourself over mission models. Yeah. It doesn't work. It does work. It doesn't work. <laughs> you know, and, and, and there's this, it seems like with paint, there's this total inconsistency. Yeah. Especially Just, in the uh, acrylic ranges. Yeah, yeah. Water-based acrylic ranges. Yeah, you can turn the clock back 20 years or 30 years or whatever and, and go back to the enamel days. And we didn't have any of that. Nothing. You know, I mean, it just yeah. didn't have, there, I, I don't remember anything like that. Well, That's you know, I hear something funny yeah. is you say that the only, now I know there was others, but the only readily at least in my area, uh, available water-based acrylics were the Model Master. Uh -huh. And I, I'm going to try these and see how they work. And they worked like a flipping champ. Yeah. They worked great. You know, this is back in the 80s. Right, yeah. You know, and that and the enamels, like you say, they were they were really good stuff. I mean, there was to me and stuff, but I, I never used that back then. Right. So but, what, what, what's, I guess the thing that I, that I would, that is baffling to me, I, like I said, I don't want to say frustrating, but is how can you take the same product and give it to two or three or four different people and it be inconsistent amongst those four people on, on how it works? How does that happen? It's a chemical. Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, it's it just, <laughs> I don't get it. I don't baffling, get it. Baffling is a very good word to use. Yeah, you know, I just don't know. But I can tell you on this, on this 109, okay, so the 76 on the bottom, this is Model Master Enamel. I still had some. The rest of this is Life Color Acrylic. Um, I don't know. This is Steinle Riz Black Primer. Anyway, um, which is what I use for black a lot. But um, this enamel, this RLM 76, I could literally take, because I did the whole airframe, top and bottom, with the RLM 76. And I could go on here with the 2000 grit or 4000 grit sandy pad and sand through this acrylic down to that enamel in no time and not do anything to the enamel. Completely rip that acrylic off of there in, yep. in a matter of seconds. And the enamel is just going, yeah, what are you going to do to me? Yeah. They're, <laughs> yeah. That, you know, they're, they're, they're fragile. And, you know, maybe it's just one of those things because of the, they're I don't fragile. know, because of the nature of it, there's just no way to get it to. They're fragile and they're finicky. Yep. And, and that's fine. But I, like I said, the thing that really just baffles me is why four different people will get four different results with the same exact thing. That's, that's true. how a product is supposed to work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, it's, it's a, it's a, that's, it's a different, different subject, but everybody's got their little, you know, right. right. This is the way I do it. I use, you know, armadillo urine mixed with a little bit of alcohol and 10% glycerin. And, and that's what I use for my thinner. It works like a champ. Right. It's like, okay, I'm going to go source some armadillo urine from some, you know, okay, shop that sells witches supplies. And guess what? It doesn't work. It just smells weird. <laughs> Did you actually try this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, and you think that's another thing that I've said before, you know, is you got to kind of be careful of what people are telling you because they may just be telling you stuff. Just so you mess up. Right. Yeah. Which I think that's cruel. But anyway. No, um, just use a little bit of chamomile tea. That'll do it. That'll work. With yeah. local honey. With local honey. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, that I would throw that in the mix. It's just paint being... Um, being uh my screen keeps blanking out being uh inconsistent i guess you know yeah. for, 
for lack of a better a better word, but it just kind of I don't understand. It it should work. Why you know it should work? Yeah. Basically, when it was Model Master Enamel, it's like okay. Well, what do you thin it with? Well, you either thin it with the Model Master Airbrush Thinner, which was expensive, or you. I get, still have a can of that, as a matter of fact. Yeah, I do too, somewhere. Or you get, um, um, well, I probably use mine. Or you get um, just lacquer thinner, and it yeah. works. Simple. That's it. That's all yep. to. <laughs> so anyway, I don't know. Yeah. Well. So that was that was my first one was the decals, and then the second one, and I think this is was another one that I that I, that popped into my head about the same time. And good grief, I thought of this topic a year ago. But another one, and this one, I I don't think there's like any kind of a a good answer for it uh -huh. because um, I've never seen anything even close to being a solution but that is clear parts for uh -huh. kits um clear now huh clear parts in general clear parts in general yeah. yeah you know for me it's you know i don't do cars so uh automotive stuff but just like for aircraft um you know you get some nice looking clear parts but the problem lies in painting the frameworks around them, right. which, you know, it's not an insurmountable thing. I mean, there's all kinds of, you know, um, masking kits for them. You know, you can make your own masks. I, you know, I've done it tons of times. But the thing is, is no matter what you do, you're still going to have, it's still not going to look like glass in a framework, especially take something like a, uh, a B24 um, or or like a, what is it? Is it a Heinkel 111 that's got that flipping greenhouse on the front? All of German, all of German bars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, you got the, you got those greenhouse looking things. You've got, you know, yeah. ball turrets in the bottom of a, a B17. You've got it, whatever it is. And this is just totally probably not something that's even something that can be done. But the problem, like, say you have side windows in an aircraft. Right. No matter what you do, there's going to be that, – that glass is not going to fit in there perfectly. Right. You know, you're going to end up with gaps and stuff like that. Uh, whenever you – get a masking set in general they're really good really close but i don't think i've ever ran into one that was perfect right it's either just ever so slightly too small or too large so you might end up with some of the framework ends up looking too skinny or too thick or whatever and then even if you even if you paint it inside and out you've still got that clear gap in between and on something a little bit bigger, you know, yeah. you can, if you look really close, you can actually see it. Yeah. You know, and it's just, it just seems like it would be nice if somebody could come up with a way of making, and again, it'd be ultra fragile, but a framework with glass that fit in it really well. See, I, it's just that I, outer frame and an inner frame and sandwich the, clear in between it yeah i just i just don't know what i don't know what could be done to fix that but you don't really don't see any advancements in it you know it's like some things you see you know like slide mold technology you know well right. they discovered a way to hollow out barrels and and to to mold like nose cones like radomes or whatever you call them on the front of a fighter jet without a seam running down the side you know all this kind of stuff but it seems like no headway has been made for clear parts. And, you know, some people, oh, so you got to get the aftermarket, the vacuum form. No, vacuum form, it's like you well, got to cut it. You got to cut it just right. Yeah. You know, you take a risk of cutting too much off and just all that kind of stuff. And it's just that's one of those one of those things on a model kit, especially now that you got these manufacturers doing the stress skin on aircraft. Yeah. Finally. And people like Tamiya and stuff like that, they're finally 
molding the kit to where the parts that glue together, those joints are natural seam lines in the real aircraft. Oh, so you know. don't have to do a bunch of sanding and sanding off detail and rescribing it and trying to put rivets back and all that kind of stuff. It's like they're making headway and that kind of stuff. Right. But the clear stuff, it's just still the same old thing. But, but you said, but now that you say that, I mean, we have seen, um, I mean, Hasegawa on some of their 172nd bombers and stuff did um, like, I think it was like the B-17 kit or something did like the rear empennage was clear so that you could mask the windows and paint it, you know, so that there wasn't, so you didn't have those issues. And, you know, I think we're seeing that with some of the stuff some of the other kits where the, the the front windscreens include the the top of the fuselage, right? Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, we're seeing some headway in that. There is, and, and those are those are especially nice because those are easy to do. Because back in the old days, when you just plopped the the windscreen and the little side windows or whatever yeah. with the frame molded onto it, right onto the fuselage. Forget trying to seal up those cracks. Or the, or the, the ones where the bottom part of the windscreen is part of the fuselage. So there's actually no frame on that body. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but what I was going to say, you know, you're talking about the side windows and stuff. There's no reason in the world why they couldn't make a large plastic piece and then provide a mask for the window. That's what Paul Budzik does. I'm not, this isn't something I thought of, but if you, if you watch Paul's, videos on windows and stuff uh, he uses that clear acrylic cuts the hole bigger than the window puts that in there uh you know does the body work on it polishes it out masks the window and then paints it right there's no reason why a kit manufacturer can't do that you know I, not that i could see i just thought of something uh oh, why couldn't? Okay, you know they have all this ability using computers and stuff like that to computers. Are these new? I've never heard of these things. It's 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 just weird. You know, it's called a uh, computer machine. Uh -huh. um, you know, he Hewler Hewler Packer and Compact and uh, you know all Albert those cutting Packer. edge. Have you heard of Albert Packer? No. <laughs> um, but he, he since they can, from what I understand, he did what? It was kind of tasty from what I understand. Some of, some guys got lost in the mountains a hundred years ago up here and, and during the winter and, and they ate him. But anyway. Oh, well, there you go. Nice. No, he sounds, ate them. He ate them. That's it. Sounds, sounds like the Downer Party. Yeah. Um, where was I going? Oh, you know, because they can use a computer and they can create these masks for bubble top canopies, all that kind of stuff. Right. Why couldn't they? make not necessarily a decal because you know that might be really hard but make some kind of a almost like a for lack of a better term some kind of a self-adhesive sticker type thing that whenever it was placed onto say the nose of a b25 the contours were correct and it would go around so it actually looked like thin ultra thin framework uh just just thinking out loud but, you know, it's, it's just one of those things. It's like, especially when you have to do stuff like that, you got to do all that. And, and again, it, it's all doable stuff. I mean, I do it all the time. I make my own masks all the time. But right. it just seems like that they could come up with a way to make it just look, you know, even if it was multi-part stuff, like a framework of some kind. And, and I don't know. Well, you Man, know, that's, that's probably asking too much. I mean, that, uh, that's just like, that's, that's, that would be quite a, an engineering what feat. Is they, is they have to keep their costs down. At the, at yeah. The but, um, you know, talking about alternative ways of doing it, when I built that B-26, I lost one of the side windows and for, like, the, the navigator compartment or whatever. And what I ended up doing is I took, I took a piece of packing tape, right? I took a piece of packing tape and I put it over the window and I cut it 
even with the panel lines that were around the window. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> and that's, that's the window. That's the window. There you <sighs> You know, but I mean, that only works for certain things. Right. And and I don't know. I haven't looked at it in years. I don't remember whether you can really tell or not. Probably not. But you know, the problem is, is now the inside surface is sitting there with all this sticky on it, just waiting for for things Fuzz to, to collect. Yeah, you know. But but anyway, uh, you know, and that's why I said at the beginning of this, you know, th I, I, this isn't to sound like negative towards manufacturers because some of it's just like at this point in time is an impossibility. Right. But it just seems like, you know, well, no, headways but, made on some things, but not on others. What's that? It's a valid thing. It's like how, you know, this is something that could be improved. And how do we, I mean, to me, it went a long ways when they did the um, the Hine and the Spitfire with the open canopy versus the closed canopy and the body inserts and all that stuff. Yeah. I will tell you the canopy on the P38 kit is fantastic. Um, yeah. It really is. It's, it's really nice. Um, and, and, you know, speaking of canopies, what I would like to see myself is, and, and I'm being selfish because I'm, I'm going back to closed canopies. And... I would really like to to have a closed canopy option in every kit. Um, this because all they, our conversation the other day. Yeah, they don't always fit together right. I mean, this one does pretty good, you know, but but they don't always fit together well when you've got multiple piece um, canopies and windscreens, and and um, really the only way to do it is in one piece yeah and I, I that's something that's like i don't see why that's not being done period i mean that's you know yeah i i agree and and that is something that just like we were talking about the other day that is something that the manufacturers could fix because and i i i mentioned it the other day but i do not get why on landing gear doors yeah. Why can they not make now I was telling you about the, the 109 G10 that I did. It right. came with both options. Right. But again, it's like they give you two sets of landing gear doors. Use these if you want them closed, use these if you want them open. Why do they even have to do that? Why I don't I'm not under I'm sure there's some kind of engineering thing, but I'm not understanding why they can't make it where because I, I wish I could remember what kit it was. I built a kit not too long ago. And the landing gear doors, man, it seemed like it was a P51, but I don't remember which one. I, I could be wrong. But it was four-piece. You know, you had the, the, the main flap or the main doors that open and then the ones that stick on the, the landing gear. Yeah. That whole piece, if you were looking at the bottom of the aircraft, that whole it came as one piece. And yeah. if you wanted them to be open, it was scored on the inside. You cut it there and sand oh, it out a little bit to make it smooth, and boom, you've got your open doors. But it was just one set. You didn't have to have two sets or you're stuck with open gear only. Because I've gotten some kits and it's like, you know, it comes one set of landing gear doors. And when you just set them on there, they're, they don't fit. <laughs> They're right. a different shape, and I don't, I, I don't get that. I don't understand that. If anybody out there in the modeling world, but manufacturing or has insider tips or whatever, please explain it in the comments below because I don't get why they can't, why it's an either or proposition, why you can't have one set of landing gear doors, whether it's one piece and you cut them apart, or one set that actually fits. Don't understand why they can't do that. Uh, yeah, yeah, and I, and I think the the. The thing that's interesting, I, I think you're talking about your Ravel Mustang, the 132nd Mustang. That might be it. I think the Airfix kit, the 48 Airfix kit's the same way, and there's another one out there that I think I've seen with the single piece door that you cut to pieces. But anyway, um, you know, I think this is another 
one of those instances where we've come full circle from where kits have gone from being wheels up on stands and coming with a stand mm -hmm. to, oh, we want landing gear, you know? And, and so we got landing gear and, and now we want stands again. <laughs> well, you know, it's funny how many people are starting to, to do that again. You know, right. I mean, there, it just, it just seems that there's more and more people, you know, it's like, I want to do gear up, you know? Right. Airfix is one that's definitely, you know, pioneering that or whatever. Um, <laughs> some our new tool stuff. I know, I think all the ones that I've seen myself have that option. Yeah. The Hurricane did, the Mustang does, the P40s do. Um, and, th and that really, honestly, fits right in with the canopy thing. It's the yeah. same, it's same. Exactly. Same thing. <laughs> It's the same issue. Um, well, if, Bad Angel, the one I just finished. Uh-huh. You know, I got I got the uh, the windscreen portion glued into place, lined it up great, looks great. Put the canopy on there, shove it all the way forward, and there's a gap on the top. Right. And I say on top, it's an even gap all the way around. So I have two choices. Either I can sand that down a little bit or sand it down a little bit, you know, behind the windscreen or a combination of both so it fits together snug. But then in the back, that curved part that rests on top, yeah, it's it's going to you're, you're going to have a noticeable, you yeah, know, that like a little fun. flat spot in the back. It's like, that so your, your idea, one whole piece yeah, that's not one of to me is better engineering things there. That rear canopy on that Mustang is not done well. I don't think, in my opinion. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, it's really the same issue is that the the, the the clear parts and the and the landing gear thing. You know, I mean, I get it on some aircraft. The landing gear doors are multiple multi piece and this and that. But but yeah, why don't they fit in the holes? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh, what else? You got another one? Uh, I'm looking through my list from our, our discussion. Oh, here. You got one? List. <laughs> um, yeah, as a matter of fact, one of the guys in my club was, was lamenting about uh, car kits. He's mainly an aircraft guy, and he's doing some car kits just for a change of pace. And he's he's like... Why do the bodies not fit the chassis correctly? And I'm like, you know, now that you say that, I haven't built a whole lot of cars in my adulthood, but I built quite a few in my childhood. And yeah, that was always a nightmare to get that thing on there and 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 have it be um, where it's supposed to be. There, it wasn't. Uh... Hence, no car kits in my current collection. <laughs> It wasn't a positive location. That's the word I'm looking for. It wasn't a positive. There was no positive alignment. You know, and right. And, and um, so, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sure the newer kits are, are probably much better than that. Um, going back to aircraft, I know for me and for a lot of people, pilot figures would be nice. Yep. Um, I don't really see the big deal here. There, I, I mean, the reality is you you only need a couple of different basic figures, and if you had a, you know, your three D model, you could tweak the legs and arms a little bit for each individual aircraft. But, but what do you need? You need a uh, just take the U, just take U S World War II for example. You need a Navy pilot and an Air, Army Air Force pilot. There you go. And maybe a bomber pilot, you know, because they don't necessarily wear their the headgear and stuff. Or you know what I mean? I mean, there you don't need a whole lot of different things, and you can just tweak the files a little bit for different cockpits and whatnot, and you're good. Yeah, you know. Um, so I think that would be huge. Um, I mean, we're seeing more munitions. Uh, coming coming with kits. I don't know that a lot of them are very well done. Um, 
but we are seeing more um, more ordinance. Uh, I think. Uh, it, yeah. Um, but like I said, it was is a lot of it well done. No, but it's there. Um, <clears throat> I mean, those are those are two huge things. The, the pilot thing. I mean, it really to me. It did a cool, you know, with the the corsairs when they put the corsairs out, and they got the one figure that's kind of like leaning up against, standing on the wing and leaning mm -hmm. up against the fuselage. I mean, that's a cool figure, you know, monogram. I mean, those are dated. Those figures are dated. But I've still got a bunch of them, and yeah. they work, you know. And and they're um, and they're the only game in town, and a lot of things. But um, I mean, if I was, and I know there's guys already doing this, but if if I was, if I had a 3D printer and I wanted to take the time to learn how to do that stuff, which I don't, <laughs> um, good man, um, I I would go down that road. Of doing pilot figures and stuff i really i i i think you know even if you didn't make money at it at least you're providing something that people actually need <laughs> yeah you know it's funny you bring up the figure thing because oh my goodness here's something else two things figure manufacturers can't get right uh oh oh Okay, so I check out modeling news quite a bit, right? Yeah. And it is just astonishing and bewildering. It's like every flipping figure that gets released is another German figure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, oh, how many do we need? <laughs> But try and find a U.S. figure, you know, a U.S. World War II U.S. figure or World War II Japanese figure. Right. And forget about finding any, but the, say, Italian or anything like that. It's like, it just seems like they just, and I know it's a, like a lot of people's like, well, it's what sells. Well, well, it's what sells because that's all there is. You know, well, when you've got variety to no end of a certain subject yeah well yeah that's what people are going to buy because man, that's all there's is available you know and if you try and find a u.s figure or or israeli figures i was trying to find an israeli tank commander figure you know for that uh shot cal i built and it's like well you kind of have to find a 70s uh era you know u.s figure tank commander because you know they use the same equipment you just have to do that and just paint it the right colors and all it's like why, why don't why don't we make why don't we make other nationalities for crying out loud? There was a lot of other players in this. Well, thing. I, yeah, and, and I, you know, I mean, I get the 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 German. They they do the German stuff because people build it and and because people buy it. But and and I, you said that, and I. So I noticed on my own stuff. Okay, just just for instance, looking at views and stuff on things and whatnot. Because I don't do a lot of German stuff. But when I do, I typically get three times the views on that stuff than anything else that I've done. Yep. So there, I mean, it's, it, to me, when they say, well, that's the stuff to sell, that's totally legit. I, because it's the stuff that people are looking at. And here's the thing, you know, Granted, they had some interesting uniforms across the board. I mean, they had so many different styles of uniforms and just all the accoutrements go with it and everything else. Right. And that's cool. But there's a lot of people that would just like to be able to, you know, build some other stuff. Right, right. No, I'm just saying. I, I mean, yeah. I, get, yeah, I get their thing, but yeah. It's, 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 just, it's just like, all right, do we need another 109? Do we need one? No, but will it sell? Yeah. Get one. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter how many, you know, G10s you release, they'll all sell for right. one reason or another. Right. Um, another thing about the figures, and this one is a pet peeve of mine, and I know I've mentioned it to you before. <sighs> do a little research. 
on your figures. Yeah. Okay, you may have a tricked out uniform and everything like that, but I have never, ever, ever. And if anybody out there in viewer land um, has a photo that can prove me wrong, please put a link to it down in the comment section. I've never found one. And that's a World War II soldier carrying all tactical like. Carrying what? Carrying his weapon all tactical like. Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, when guys were were trucking along with the Tommy gun, if they were carrying it with one hand, they'd have their hand on the on the pistol grip and it was kind of tucked up underneath their armpit right. a little bit, just kind of hanging there. It wasn't all, you know, with it all up here on their shoulder and you know, carrying it all tactical like a modern SWAT team or special forces or something. It's like they didn't carry like that back then, but yet they'll were, you know, you'll see some German German figure. With his STG forty or his um, yeah STG forty four, all trucked right. up on his shoulder and you know trucking along and it's like, but part of that I blame on the uh, the Hollywood world, right? Because you may get a military advisor and he may know his stuff, but maybe his stuff he knows only goes back to Vietnam, you know. When you got, when you got, you know, even then, it, you, I mean, that would be okay. But yeah. when you got Colin Hanks in this, this drove me insane. Colin Hanks in Band of Brothers, whenever they're went across the river and they were attacking that place to get some prisoners, right. and he's doing that, the full on, you know, crouch the, the the quick step crouch without you know moving. No, they held the stinking gun at port arms and ran. To the next, you know, place they could hide. They weren't just, you know, like they're breaching a building in, in you know, the Middle East somewhere nowadays. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that just burns me out. So, you know, that's another thing that the figure manufacturers could get right. Just have them posed, period correct. Period That'd correct. be great. Period is right. Get your periods in the right place. Exactly. At the end of the sentence. Punctuation. Punctuation is important. <laughs> <laughs> oh i had something else on here what is it i don't remember oh we got we got to talk about instructions <laughs> <laughs> heaves heavy sigh of exasperation <laughs> is that all we need to say about instructions oh my lord <laughs> i i guess what i would say is is we all know that there are certain manufacturers that are, that everything that they put on paper is suspect. Uh, and then the other thing that I would say is never, ever, 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 ever trust a paint guy. Ever. <laughs> is that enough nevers? Yeah. No, not really. You could throw a few more in there and still be I'm good. I'm say there's not some good ones out there. I'm just saying you can't you can't rely on if you're worried here's what I will say if you're worried about accuracy accuracy quote yeah um, and your color selections and whatnot you need to do your own research that's all I'm going to say. I really, you can't, you should not, I'm not going to say you can't rely on anybody because there are people out there that know their stuff. And until you figure out who that is for yourself, you need to do your own research. Um, my opinion, you know, you just, because, just because, I mean, and, and, that, and I'm not, and, and that's, that doesn't mean everybody's stuff is going to come out looking the same because it's not. Um, because everybody has a different idea of what's correct. And I know that doesn't sound like it should be that way, but, but you know, we're all, we all see things a little differently. We all have our own perspective. Yeah. And, and that's okay. And, and um, um, you can, there's enough variation in different things in the world in between 
seasons and times of day and lighting angles and cloud cover and all this other stuff, that there's a lot of leeway in how you interpret the color mm -hmm. that's out in the world and how you scale it down. So what I'm saying is find your own way, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, and maybe that flies in the face of accuracy, but I think that is what I think that is accuracy. Right. Well, you know, and, and one in in one thing, you know, it's like saying what can't they get right? What they are get, getting right, get better at is um, they're they're for the most part, there's always examples of wrong, but they seem to be getting a little bit better with their research on a given subject. And instead of going to Museum A and saying, okay, this is the plane we want to do, take all your measurements, get all the colors, all that kind of stuff. And only to find out, you know, a couple of years later, it's like, oh yeah, we've got to tell you, you know, that, that you know, yeah, it's a P-51 on the outside, but, you know, that's a, that's a Stearman cockpit in there. And, you know, we right. put Cadillac wheels on it just so we could set it up. And so, right. you know, now you've got something that's totally wrong because, you know, I mean, there's been all kinds of cases like that in the past. Right. But, you know, they're getting a little bit better. And especially the ones that will listen to researchers. Right. And hopefully more than one, not just one who might have the wrong information. But, you know, they're kind of going outside of, just their own research teams, it seems like. So right. the stuff we're getting is, you know, quite a bit better. Yeah, yeah, I, I uh, I'm trying to think of what the, there was a big fumble with, I don't remember now, but yeah, especially with aircraft, there is all kinds of aircraft at museums that are, um, that are made from parts, right? And the parts come from various places and you'll have things from different marks and things from different aircraft and and, and you definitely can't trust the paint colors. Right. You know, and, and, and wartime natural metal aircraft were not chrome, I'm sorry. <laughs> I know, you know, if you like that, fine, but, but no. <laughs> you know, the thing of it is, is you might have some shiny spots for right. whatever reason, but yeah, I mean, it got, they got dirty, just like all of them did. They got dirty, filthy, scuffed, you know. Right. Everything else. And right. Here's um, another one. Uh -huh. This one's really specific. Uh -huh. Okay. Really specific. Uh oh. Um, And that is, ah, uh, sorry, P-51s, okay? Uh, it's general knowledge that the seam lines, depressed rivets, all that kind of stuff was puttied up, sanded, and lacquered over with that high speed, yeah. that DuPont high speed silver. Yep. Okay. I mean, why do they not? <laughs> why do they not just mold the wings? I mean, that's one of those cases where it would save money because there's less tooling involved. They don't have to have all that detail for only certain things. I mean, you got to have the, the seam line for the uh, um, ammo doors, machine gun doors, all that kind of stuff. And for, you know, that little cover on the front where the machine guns come out, but everything else, it's supposed to be smooth. Yeah. Why don't they just mold them that way? Because man, it's like it's a pain to have to fill all that. If, you know, if you want to go that direction, like on Bad Angel, I didn't do it. I forgot. I've done that a couple times already. I ain't doing it again. Right. So I just left them open and nine people out of 10 don't even care. Right. But, I mean, I would like for it to be that way. And just, man, it just seems like putties. Well, along those same lines, is like, why is why are there panel lines on a 262 kit? Exactly. 
Exactly. I mean, it's the same thing. It's the same exact. It's like, why are there panel lines on this kit? They're all they're all filled and and smooth. Uh, yeah, you know, it's. I don't know. It's it's. You know, that's something that I've I've. Uh, I've been contemplating trying and something I've actually wanted to do for quite a number of years, ever since I was a kid, really, because I saw it in a book that I have, I don't know where it is, but um, where, you know, basically they remove all the panel lines. This was in the raised panel line days, remove all the panel lines, paint the aircraft, and then draw them in with a pencil, with a mechanical pencil. Or as the old Budzig does, He'll paint the thing, right. and they just barely scribe the paint. That scares the hell out of me. That I, I'd have like big chips <laughs> flying off and flakes and everything else. I don't think that, but it just that scares me to death. <laughs> it's like really, I don't know. But the pencil thing, um, I I saw it done. It was a one oh nine. And it was in a book, and the guy was a brush painter. And this, this is what really stuck out to me was, first of all, it was brush painted. Couldn't tell. And second of all, all the panel lines were done in pencil. So he did all the body work, sent all the panel lines off and everything, painted it, brush painted it, and then drew the panel lines in with a pencil. It looked, it looked fine. It looked it, I, I will admit, it looked different than what we're used to seeing now. But this was in the 70s. Yeah. You know, and it was amazing. Um, I want to try it. I'm not sure on what, but I want to try it. I was well, half trying it on this B-29. <laughs> Yowza. You got a lot of pencils? I don't think there's I, I, a lot of graphite, bro. I, I really need to go back and look at my reference photos because I'm thinking, I don't think the panel lines are that prominent on the 29. I really don't. Yeah, probably not. And um, I mean, it was super high tech in its day. Yeah. Um, that, that was space age stuff. Pressurized cabins, the whole thing. Yeah, you know, so I don't know. Anyway. You know, you mentioning the, the panel lines, um, that, that's something else. And, and again, it's something that this one's actually starting to come to fruition. Okay, you got these, you got these aircraft that have all this stress skin and what do they call that, oil can, oil canning or whatever. Okay, yeah. Well, they're finally starting to get into that kind of stuff. You know, you're finally starting to see some manufacturers doing that on their kits. Um, but like on, I think it's the that's B7. That's you can hide the pebbly texture of the plastic. Um, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I can't remember what kit I built not too long ago, and it was just like, holy cow, man, did they, like, line the inside of the molds with some, like, fine grit sandpaper to give it, you know, like a nice rough cast texture, cast texture on an airplane. Remember we are talking about building an airplane like a tank? Yeah. Cast texture, rolled <laughs> steel. Um, anyway, sorry. Um, the, uh, I think it was on the B-17. They didn't have... The floating heads back. <laughs> they didn't have the uh, uh, butted up against each other. Yeah. Um, things, yeah. but they were overlapped. Yeah. You know, both aircraft were like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, and it's like, so, I mean, I, I know it's extra tooling and it would take, you know, extra stuff, but I mean, the technology's there. And they're doing all kinds of other crazy stuff on models nowadays. Why not throw that in there too? Right. There was somebody years ago that used to take a raised panel kit, and in order to make that that idea of, of overlapping panels even more um, convincing, would fill the forward edge, would fit, would fare it in. The really? 
panel line so that it was a, so that it just so that it dropped off so that it was just a drop uh i forget wow. who that was it was somebody that, that did i mean i'm talking in the 80s probably some maniac i tell you yeah, that. right Jeez. <laughs> wowzers um going back to figures here's something that's, that's always that I've always noticed. I, I don't want to say bothered me, but something that is that has, has always um, been something that I've been aware of is most of the figure kits that you see, most of the figures that you see, at least um, facially have um, more mature features than they should have in my opinion yeah it's uh, like they all they all look like uh, late war they all look like or something. In their 30s yeah they should yeah. be teenagers once yeah. in a while you'll get one that looks really young but most of the time they're just these gnarled veterans you know yeah, looking yeah. like lee marvin in the uh, in the big red one or something right. it's like well, it's like mm. social security what the hell are you doing in italy you yeah. know <laughs> but yeah um and I know, yeah, I'm that guy that notices this weird stuff. To ask Brett about the picture we were just looking at at the tank, and what's the first thing that I see? Look at the color on the inside of that hatch. <laughs> Why are you uh, looking at that? I don't know. It's the way my brain works. <laughs> At least it looked like it was the right color, though. <laughs> yeah, but you, but no, you know, I, I, I've, I've, it's just something that's always struck me. It's like they all look like they're in their late twenties, early thirties. You know, you don't see any kids unless they're meant to be children. Then they look like right. Them. You know, and, and it's just it's is there a reason for that? You know, is it is it done? Maybe maybe it's like on um, Das Boat whenever they were just setting out. And the uh, photographer journalist guy, he's like wanting to snap pictures of the crew. And the uh, the captain of the vessel says, "No, no, no, wait, don't don't take the pictures yet. Wait till we're you know getting ready to come home, because right now people are going to think we're on a children's crusade because they're all clean shaven, but he's really young kids." You know, right. let them get grizzled and whiskers and everything else. So, you know, that people don't think we're sending our babies off to war. Right. Even though we are. That's, yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. Um, yeah, I hear you, though. You get all these gnarly looking dudes. It's like, man, they look like they've been fighting since they're veterans of the first war. And here they are in the second. Right, right, right. What else was I thinking? All those groovy things that we had, I can't. Uh... Car hinges, the, the hood hinges on on vehicles. And, and I don't know, you know, somebody was talking about basically like a working hinge that was more, that looked like at least somewhat like the hinges actually look. Yeah. Um, well, I remember as a kid, I remember I mentioned as a kid, you know, building the, the old Revell kits. It's like, yeah, they had kind of a hinge for the door to open it, but it was these two big loops. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That kind of got sandwiched yeah. in between this big block of plastic and then, the, you know, the left side there by the, you know, pedals and everything. And it's like, what is that supposed to be? Right, yeah. I mean, the door, yeah, it swings open, but it doesn't look anything like the real deal. That door is like two feet thick. Yeah. <laughs> and, and and that, you know, I don't know, that kind of comes in my head, that kind of comes into the the working tool, tool clamp thing. It's like, uh, I don't know. Yeah. But um boy, I don't know. Let's see. I think we've about covered it. I think so. Those are just some. Those are just some of the things that popped into my head. And again, you know, I want to stress to everybody out there watching this thing. This isn't like a bag on the 
on the manufacturers. Oh. Other than maybe the decal thing, it's like, well, I think we could really do better on that. But it's just, you know, kind of food for thought, you know, some things that, you know, why hasn't anybody, especially with the way technology is progressing, why hasn't anybody kind of addressed some of the problems that have been problems for years, you know? Right. Do, but, you, do you think we're, we're going to see start seeing masks and kits in the box instead of decals? You know, um, I, I don't know, you know, and that's one of those things, it, this, this, this gets into some of that other stuff that you and I were talking about last week, but it wouldn't be because masking mask sets for kits are cheap. Okay, yeah. if you buy them from Edward or whoever, H, what's that, like HGW or something like that, HGW, whatever, yeah. you buy you buy them, you know, they're not that much, okay? Right. It would be nice if the manufacturers threw them both in there, you know? That's you cool. know, I mean, sorry. No, I, I was just, you know, it's like, you know, why not give people the, the, uh, the option and the people that are making them now selling them as an aftermarket thing so maybe the manufacturers buy it from them that way those people aren't going out of business because it's not like a you know i mean but not everybody's going to do it so they'd still have them to sell for aftermarket but it'd still it'd be nice if if there was a an option well, what i was going to say is is i remember a few years back seeing i forget who was the made them but they made um basically PE stencil sets for armor. And I was like, man, those are great because it's 100% reusable. And um, I mean, what a great idea. And they were like, I don't know. I want to say they were, they were kind of expensive. You know, they were, there yeah. was like three or four of them. They're about that big. And they were like 20 bucks a sheet or 15 bucks or, or 20. But it's like, you buy it once. You know, they had one with all the, the hull numbers, and then they had the national insignia, and they had a U.S. set, and a German set, and, and, and I mean, you would still have to do something about license plate numbers and, and serial right. numbers and things like that, but as far as the national insignia and the, and the vehicle numbers and stuff. Yeah, the bigger stuff. Tactical symbols and, and stuff like that, I mean... You know, but in, in thinking about it, just right now, I don't think, I mean, I don't know if they'd ever, I, I really don't, now that I think about it more, I, I don't, I don't think, I don't think they'll ever do that because decals are universal. Everybody can do decals, mostly. Yeah. Masks, there's a little bit more to it, especially when you got stuff like roundels, you know, like, with yellow, red, blue, white, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it's a lot more involved. And there's, I think there, I think, I really think by far the majority of people building models, um, decals are 100% just perfect. That's, that's good enough for them. They don't care if, you know, they're pronounced in relation to the to the paint around it you know it's like man eh, you know i'm just sticking them on here i'm not gonna do any weathering where you know dust is gonna collect on the edge of it you know so i don't think they'll replace it you know you might get somebody like you know edward in their profi pack edition maybe someday they'll say oh hey you know what since we're already adding all this extra stuff and these kits cost let's throw in some stencils too you know or uh, masks who knows well i think i i just kind of caught myself doing something that I try not to do and that is you know i get i get tunnel vision and i think when i start when i start thinking you know about this stuff i'm thinking of it from the point of view of somebody that that has an airbrush and has 14 different knives and 27 different kinds of tweezers and and, and it's easy to forget that we're not necessarily there's a whole lot of people out there that are there's there's more people out there that are doing this with a lot less than we are than, than exactly are us that have all of this stuff. Yep. Um, and 
you can't really use a stencil without an airbrush. You can, but you have to be very, very, very light on your touch. Yep. Because it'll bleed. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, there's that part of it too. Just, I, you know, I'm always kind of thinking of things of how are you going to sell it? <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the thing too, that, you know, that's just like all this stuff we're talking about. It's like, People, uh, probably a majority of the people listening to us blab away right now are thinking, you guys are talking about non-issues. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And in reality, we are. Right, you know, yeah. it's just something that popped into my head as a topic. And right. mainly it came from decals. And out of all the things we've talked about, I think the decals is the one that I think could be solved. Could be solved. Yeah. Just by either people changing the technology they have, changing their suppliers, or whatever, you know, because if some guys can do it and do it very well and do it consistently across the board all the time, well, there's no reason everybody can't do it. The technology obviously is there. Right. You know, so, and you got companies like Superscale, they've been around forever. So they've been doing it for a cartograph, they've been doing it for a long time long time so it's not like it's suddenly this new thing that everybody has to you know kind of catch up with it's like well no you guys are behind the behind the curve here it's been going on for years and you're still putting out these decals that are just junk yeah and, and you know there's other things behind the scenes in, in, in any kind of manufacturing that that you just have to deal with when they come up and, uh, and one in particular is when a material disappears you know you 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 have a material that you that you use and and the people that your your supplier oh we're not making that anymore because you were the only people on the planet that were using it it's not worth our time and so you're gonna have to use this new stuff well now all of a sudden they're you know say say it's a new decal film say you know the stuff that you were using it's just too expensive for us to manufacture we don't want to deal with it anymore it's a pain in our butt whatever so they quit making it or, or the, the the chemicals that we use to make this are illegal now. So we can't make it any, whatever the reason is. I, that stuff happens, you know, yep. I mean, it does. And, and so, so they have to change their clear that they're using, that they're printing the decals on. And so now it reacts totally different to your solvent. And you're going, what the heck? Yeah. You know, well, that could be the very problem I had with those decals I just did. Right, right. So, so how do you, you know, how do you deal with with things like that? I mean, is is I guess what I would say, what I would think. I mean, it would be it would be a good thing to, you know, put a note in with your sheets after they change to to your customers say, hey. We had to change the backing on these things because they, we couldn't get the old stuff anymore. Um, so you can't use Microsol any, on these because they'll disappear or whatever. If you right. put Microsol on these things, these things are going to curl up just like one of them, them snake fireworks that you like. <laughs> yep. Fly, you know, or whatever. You know, don't do, you know, you, you know what I'm saying? So... But they don't, you know, they don't necessarily do that. They just change. Well, I mean, that's what happened with this. Well, that's not really what happened with this stuff. What happened with this stuff is the people that were making it for Badger substituted some of the ingredients. Yeah. And the, and the stuff wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, you know, so. But once well, they figured it out, went back to the way it was most of doing it, then it's fine. You know? Right. Well, all that you just said, a perfect example is Archer Dry Transfers. Yeah. Almost wiped them out because wherever they got their stuff for doing dry transfers, it's like, oh, we're not doing it anymore. Sorry. Yeah. So they're having to come up with something completely different now. Right. You know, and, and their line, I mean, they used to have all kinds of stuff and right. they are still just Right. They're, I mean, they're just a fraction of what they used to have. And they're just little by little adding stuff to it as they figure it out. Because they're having to do something totally different. 
because of what you just said, because I remember when they made their announcement. The people we got our stuff from, they don't make it anymore. So once this stuff's gone, nothing we can do. Bye bye, Archer Tri dry, dry Transfers. I mean, that's one of those names I always saw in the magazine mag magazines as a kid, thinking, "Ooh, I'd like to try those," you know. But I had no place to get them from, you know. Yeah. Nobody carried them locally, and it's like, oh, that just sounds like these exotic, awesome materials, and blah, blah, blah. And they've been around forever, and now suddenly, boom. Sorry, guys. Yeah. What? Right, right. Yeah. yeah. So that's a, that's a very good example you just brought up, because the same thing happened to, to Archer, so they're having to do something completely different now. I don't know how I got off on that tangent, but anyway. Well, no, you just, you know, stuff doesn't behave the same. Scope creep is my middle name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, well, anyway, yeah, that's, uh, I think we've kind of run this one into the ground. But, you know, so all you people out there in uh, watching slash listening land, if there's anything you can think of that uh, manufacturers have kind of dropped the ball on or should have had a bit figured out by now, Drop me in the comments down below. We'd like to hear what you guys have to say because yeah. I'm sure a lot of different people have a lot of different ideas on the same thing. So, yeah, it's kind of like that thing you see every year. What kit do you want? It's the same idea. Yeah, exactly. What kit do you want? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that anybody's going to see them but us, but you know. yeah. Yeah. And our, and our two viewers. <laughs> it happens to be us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we watch it, you know, on our channel, make sure it turned out right. So anyway, but uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got concerning this uh, here subject. Okay. Jim, you got anything else? I do not. Except all for right. this. As usual, take care of the people you love. See you all later. Bye.